This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Jed's Barbershop. With three locations now, you have no reason to not always look your best. Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barbershop is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. They have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House at 2153 East, 2100 South. They just opened up a third location at 167 East, 900 South, right next to Randy's Records. No appointment is necessary? Head on over to jedsbarbershop.com for more information. Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. All right. Welcome to episode 272 of I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris Hollifield. And I'm Chrissy Shelley. On this episode of the podcast, we sit down with Ross Metzger from Salt City Brew Supply and Ogden City Brew Supply. We get a chance to find out his story and talk about home brewing here in Utah. What a fascinating subject. He actually got me interested in it, and I've never been interested in it before. There's never been a part of you where you're like, gosh, I'd love to do some home brewing. Well, okay, I've always been curious about making wine, but I'm kind of stupid, and I didn't realize that home brewing also meant making wine. I always thought it was just beer. Really? Not yeah. hard ciders I'm Not hard wine. cider. I ne- like, I just never put two and two together. We get into that. So we I talk about lot. that in this. Yeah. I mean, you even bring up dandelion wine. Ooh, yeah, because I'm so curious. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that uh, here in the upcoming interview. They also have an event coming up on May 7th at Bohemian Brewery. We talk about that uh, as well in this in this interview with him. We're gonna put all the links on the website IamSaltLake.com. As always, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, which I know every time we release an episode. We get a slew of new listeners. First mm-hmm. of all, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And joining the podcast. Subscribe in iTunes, however you listen to podcasts. But better yet, you can go to the website, IamSaltLake.com. It's where we put all the episodes up there right now. You can download them, listen to them right there from the website. I mean, there's a lot of people there that are. we've been and, chatting with. And you can really look through categories of interest for you. You and know? I and I challenge people to step outside their little interest category and That's listen and find out about idea. some new people here in Salt Lake. Yeah. Everything's right there online. We even have a, a newsletter list that we're going to start sending out some emails to to you guys. So make sure to uh, sign up for that. It's getting close to our wedding. It is getting close to our wedding, you which would, we haven't really talked a lot about. We publicly. haven't talked a lot about it in public. We're getting married May 20th. Mm-hmm. We'd like you guys to be there. If you feel like you would like to come to our reception Sarah, or a celebration uh-huh. of our wedding, drop us an email. Please do. We'd love to meet. Like This is such a great place to meet you guys at. Yeah, we'd love to send you a uh, uh, an invite to our reception and have our entire I Am Salt Lake family there. That would be so cool. It would be really cool. I know you're getting a little anxious, uh, getting everything, all the final details. <sighs> I don't do details good. Well, what happened is <laughs> is this baby kind of came along, Chrissy, and then all of a sudden it's April and we're like, oh my goodness, we better start planning yeah. this wedding. I think we got really distracted by baby stuff. And, and we're like, that's okay. We're going to get married. We're going to get married. And then it's like, oh, we have to like do the work to get married. And I think you want the wedding to be a little bit bigger then probably I, it's not that I don't want it to be big. I mm-hmm. guess I'm just so easy to be like, huh, let's just take the easy road out oh, here. Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> but then with, with all of our family wanting to be involved, it, it just kind of snowballs. And I'm excited. I got a lot of family coming in from out yeah, of state. it's going to be a party. So anyway, that's going to be May 20th. So, uh, so uh, hit, us dro- up. hit us up if you'd like to come, if you feel that uh, you would like an invite to our reception at least. Hit us up online. Hey, this episode is also sponsored by Oleo Skin and Beard. If you're like us, your skin is dry. If you're like me, your beard is dry. You need to moisturize. Oleo Skin and Beard carries an amazing line of skin oils, beard oils, beard butters for moisturizing and shaping the beard. Even some great facial cleansers. Oh, yeah. And they're continuing to add more facial products. 
they continue to add more beard oil scents. Oh, that's probably true. I My just... all-time favorite Ooh. right now, their brand new Redwood Embers. Yeah, it's so good. You need to get your hands on this, guys. If you have any sort of facial hair, I even just like to rub it onto my arms and around my neck just to moisturize. Yeah. A beautiful scent. Mm, it really is. Their website, oleoskin.com, is where you can go and buy it directly from their website and find out all the local shops that carry it. Again, oleoskin.com. All right, let's jump into the conversation that we had with Ross Metzger as he tell us, tells us all about Salt City Brewing and Ogden City Brew Supply. Enjoy. Where are you from even? Let's let's kind of even start with where you were born and raised and where you call home, I guess. Um, I was born in Iowa, but moved out here when I was pretty young. My family came out here. My mom's a nurse and was working at the university hospital. Uh, I came out here when I was three. So, so I'm, a, I'm a Utahan. So no memories of, of Iowa then? No, not really, no. Do you ever go back there to visit? Yeah, I've been back a few times. My family is not there anymore, so I haven't been in a long time, but... They live all over the country now, so. Cool. Yeah. And did you always dream, like, as a kid, were you like, I want to be a home brewer? Is that kind of, <laughs> is that no. how it was? You have the I mean, DUI home no. brewing kit? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I did watch a lot of Cheers growing up, so maybe that influenced me subconsciously. I don't know. You know, I, I read somewhere that it was like... Uh, what was it? Soap in the in the it was brown water yeah, with was soap or beer. something like that, it and they was, would get yeah. really sick or something from that. Oh, I think cheers. you told me that. And they actually drink it though. Like, yeah, they had. That's to. kind of stupid when you think about it. I think it'd just be apple juice or something, right? Yeah. Well, you palatable. gotta have, you gotta have the suds on top of there though, right? You can't get that it's with really important. Really important. Yeah, yeah was it was it was like a post from. Like Norm or something yeah. so said gross. it, and, and you made me think of it. Yeah, but yeah, Cheers. Have you you've watched Cheers? I watched my parents watch Cheers. Okay, okay. So you, you know, watched, <laughs> like I wasn't I, allowed like, as a cheers kid to and watch Mash. Cheers. I was like, you guys do that, but to me, it was very boring. <laughs> like as a kid, well, I had the okay. little black and white TV in my room, and so it was Cheers and Marriage with Children every night that I got oh, to watch man. on Channel wow. Thirteen. You got to watch that growing up, so uh, you didn't. Married with you children? Didn't, you weren't yeah. in a very strict home then. No, no. So no. that's. That's what got you into home brewing. You were just a wild child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I guess I was less wild than a lot of children, I guess, because I got introduced to that young. I yeah, guess, so. sure. Well, yeah. what got Not you? Not a lot of rebellious teenage years. What got you interested in home brewing? Because actually, I'm going to jump around here mm -hmm. because home brewing is actually it's pretty new legality wise to Utah to a degree, right? Because what were yeah. you saying? 20, Two, 2009. 2009 it was legalized here is in when Utah? it got legal here in Utah, yep, just, which really isn't that far long ago. Just no. a year or two before we opened our first store, it was legalized in Utah. And it was so we were were the you second to moonshine last state. Before it was. Uh, he no. can't say that. He can't. <laughs> moonshine, moonshine is different. That's going through a, a still. So you're oh, not okay, just okay. fermenting, you're distilling. Um, that's illegal in every state. <laughs> that's in still every illegal. country. Yeah. Gotcha. Almost every country. So uh, fermentation is one thing. Distilling is another. Um, and but we started home brewing a little bit before it was legal in in the in Utah. Um, but you know the Arts Brew Supply and and um, the Beer Nut were open several years before it was legal to brew beer. But it's not illegal to sell all the stuff. So it's just a matter of doing it in your house. So what got you interested in home brewing then? Was it like just, a buddy or Yeah, just or? a friend of a friend. Uh the other owner that's not here, Cody McKendrick, he got me into it and uh a friend of ours got him into it. Okay. And we did a few batches and um had a lot of fun with it and it kind of grew into a, a bigger hobby and then a, a job. Like you enjoyed it so much that you're like, we should just we should just supply this stuff. It was it was we had a a couple of web forums at the time that we were growing and they were purchased from us. So we had some money to leverage into another business and we really wanted to open a retail store of some kind. Um, we fancy ourselves entrepreneurs, but, um, we were getting into the homebrew space anyway and personally. And so the two kind of converged and, and we, we came up with a homebrew shop. So. so are there multiple cool. owners then with Salt City Brew Supply in Ogden City Brewing then? Is there 
there's just two cody cody mckendrick and i myself um we we started the first one in 2011 um and then moved to a bigger store in 2014 and then opened the ogden store in 2015 okay that's i was kind of curious which one came first uh the salt salt lake or or ogden yeah uh, and, and I got some more questions on that, but I kind of want to even go back a little bit to your home brewing. When you were home brewing, I mean, anything that like remarkable, were you making any good brews or was it good? Was it just garbage or was it beer, wine? I think, well, we started with beer. Um, there's lots and lots of people get into it brewing wine first though, or hard cider. But really with the sanitation stuff you have these days, it's it's hard to mess up a batch of beer or wine so you can get right into it and start making good stuff right off the bat and we did uh, i never had a, a batch that i dumped or anything it was all pretty good stuff really? right from the get-go yeah i was reading i think it was on your site or it was somewhere i was trying to learn a little bit about like home brewing beer and they were saying that like it can get infected or it can yeah I, so no- nothing not- can grow in wine or beer or cider that can hurt you Mm -hmm. but there there are molds and bacteria that can grow in there that don't taste good okay so so that's what that means it's just kind of ruining the flavor right you can get an infection that does taste good um and those are sour beers okay those are getting really popular right now. like is that like ipa i I don't know much about there's a there's a sour beer it's called like birthday suit or birthday suit yeah is that that's from you into you oh my gosh it's so good chrissy Mm -hmm. really i found it uh what's the beer hive Mm -hmm. on downtown they have it and i used to get it and i loved it so much yeah but then i stopped drinking beer so the beer hive and the bayou have a, a very broad selection of stuff um the biggest selections in Utah as far as far as I know. So you can get a lot of different beers and sour beers right now are kind of the new IPAs. They're kind of the new up and coming popular beers and everybody's trying to get their hands on them. And the homebrew clubs are, are starting to brew more and more sour beers. Right on. So, I mean, when you opened up Salt City Brewing, Mm -hmm. were there, I mean, we don't have to give names, but there, there's obviously other beer brewing supply companies yeah or shops in in utah no we can give other names we have good relationships you, with, pretty good relate yeah. what was there much competition or is there still not a lot of competition so when you opened up there's arts brew supply which kind of started the scene from what i understand quite a long time ago um and the beer nut opened up a little while after him and they've both been going pretty strong uh we opened in 2011 probably I don't, I'm not sure when the beer nut opened, probably sure, 10 years yeah. later than them. They, they were the big shop in town, the beer nut, and they still are a big shop in town. Um, but we moved farther, they're downtown and we moved farther South to kind of help out the people on the South end of the Valley in the middle part of the Valley. And, um, we've stayed good friends with Mark Alston, the guy that owns the beer nut and the Bayou, um, and so wait, we sent the people, same guy that owns yeah. beer. Nut? I didn't know mm-hmm. that the Bayou and, and beer. Nut. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, but we send people down to him. He sends people up to us. If, if we're out of stuff, we call him. If he's out of stuff, he calls us. So, um, yeah, we have a working relationship with them. And I, I think that's, that's important. Very cool. Yeah. I think a lot of, uh, especially Salt Lake city businesses can learn a lot from that mm-hmm. to help each other out recommend each other hey we don't have this but go check them out i think i think could be helpful oh absolutely oh, yeah i mean you're trying to support the hobby of home brewing not just get all the little customers you can you want to grow the hobby so more people are in it you know the the rising tides lift all ships or whatever the saying is what what kind of obstacles i mean i'm sure there had to be obstacles in the beginning especially in utah yeah, i don't know I, I, like I, I just I imagine Utah wouldn't be an easy state to start a home brewing business, like supply business. Um, it's not regulated because we don't sell alcohol. We we sell groceries, so you know you can go to a grocery store and get apple juice and bread yeast and make hard cider, and nobody's going to card you. Nobody's going to question anything. Okay, a, a nine year old kid could walk in and buy that stuff and walk out the door. So we're, we're no different in that regard that yeah. we just basically sell groceries and, and equipment. Um, and that's why you could have a homebrew shop before homebrewing was legal is there was nothing illegal about the stuff you were selling. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So beyond the tasks you have to go through to open a business 
in general, there sure. wasn't anything extra on top of that. Why was home brewing even illegal in Utah? Any idea? Just the stupidity of the state in general? or Well, or? we weren't the last people to legalize it. I think it was Mississippi or Alabama or one of those. I think we're the second or third to last well, of course, to you know. do it. Yeah, because it was, it was all obviously during the prohibition. Yep, that's when it... Made it legal across the board, right? Correct. Yep. And then like I was reading states slowly started re-legalizing it in like the 70s i want to say yeah but it took us look, look at you i know yeah. right uh-huh. you, she did her homework <laughs> prior she always yeah, surprises like she yeah. always surprises me you know but it's interesting that it took that long you know i think yeah, yeah. us in alabama were the two last states yeah to finally legalize it it just it wasn't on anybody's radar you know it's hard to push a bill that nobody i mean the cops before it was legal weren't going out and busting people for home brewing it was just <laughs> it's just happened. it's kind of yeah. a non-issue right, nobody exactly. really cared about it yeah so it's hard to get you know a bill sponsored i'm sure when nobody's asking for it in the first place but yeah um, see and yeah. i i remember talking to somebody I, I i don't remember exactly who it was where they actually said they got busted for home brewing. I swear, like this was up in like Davis County, mm-hmm. and one of the neighbors narked them out or something. It was back <laughs> in like the nineties. Yeah, we have probably a unique situation here where there's there's certain neighbors or with you know um, a majority of the U- Utahns probably don't want to see it. Sure, mm-hmm. um, and would be more than happy to call the cops and have somebody get in trouble for it. <laughs> Whereas the most other states is probably just a non-issue. Yeah, a bunch of tattletales. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. And and you're out there cooking in a big pot and with like chiller look, coil looking things. And mm-hmm. some people could think that it's not just beer that you're making. Could be any number of things. That's, that's true, especially if they don't really know much about it. Right. They would probably jump to the worst assumption like meth. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. they're that's, cooking meth. That's what I was... Yeah. So when you decided to open up Ogden, I mean, what... What was the deciding factor there? Just kind of an expansion, or was there anything that like helped you decide? Okay, well let's let's go up to Ogden and do this. Um, Ogden's always kind of had a big homebrew community, from what we understood, and people were coming down to Ogden, clear, you know, from Ogden to Midvale to shop with us. There's been homebrew supply stores up there, but they they would last a couple of years and then fade out, and two were up there after we opened our store um and we saw the second one kind of fading and decided that that was that was the direction we wanted to go we knew we wanted to open another smaller store somewhere a satellite store but we weren't sure where and then we decided ogden was the place to go so and and why didn't you just keep it salt city brew supply for up there too just to keep it more local you know it's it's there's local homebrew communities basically and we wanted to feel more of a an ogden atmosphere even though we tell everybody there's two stores Mm -hmm. um we just wanted to keep it more like a home base for people in that city yeah exactly do you do you think it's been a good move to move up to ogden yeah we when we opened the midvale store it grew faster than we expected Mm -hmm. and when you open the ogden store it's been growing slower than expected but it's still on an upward trend we've been open for a year and a half and it's still going in the right direction it's, that's the important it's part. Been, it's been making money, you know, yeah. and it's still going in the right direction. So it it was a good idea, but it was it was a little bit of a shock to see how much slower the growth was up there than it was in Midvale. Yeah, it's kind of nice that you have the two places to kind of balance each other out. Yes, that is true as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever yeah. see yourself doing like a Utah County Brew Supply <laughs> or St. George Brew Supply? We've Do you had want to get picketed. <laughs> we've had people ask about St. George, quite a few people. Really? Um, but we'd have to have somebody that wanted to live down there basically to open the store or, or set up a franchise or something. And it's not something we're really interested in doing. Lots of people in Utah County have asked for it and we've thought about doing it with a little bit different structure where you'd have more root beer. Root beer, soda stuff. Um You know, that would actually be huge down there. Like yeah. a lot of people down there make their own homemade root beer and yeah, and there's water kefir and kombucha that we we know about, and we we have mm-hmm. kombucha stuff, and those are low to no alcohol, so they might be interested in that. We also basically have food storage supplies, right? Our fermenters are are glass containers or plastic containers, and that's big down there is food storage. So you could probably spin it a little bit differently and have a beer section and a wine section, but have it more focused in that sure. part of Utah. 
So let's say somebody's coming in. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is kind of a weird question, but I'm sure a lot of people listening haven't have never been to your shop or what to even really expect there. I mean, what kind of stuff is there? Like you walk in, what are you going to see? What what can you buy? Or is there any guidance for people who are complete newbies? Yeah, to know I mean, what to what, do? they they walk in there. What do they do? Yeah, so we we try to be extra nice to people that have no idea what they're doing. Um, there are hobby stores. You know, any hobby basically gets into a rut where you, they want people to be doing it their way, and if they're not doing that their, their way, then they're not in the hobby. Um, but we try not to be like that. We're just a retail store. So it's very, it's an open atmosphere. Um, it's a little bit dusty in there because we mill grain for people's beer and that creates dust. We have a separate room for it, but no matter what, it's dusty in there. Um, but you walk in and you see a bunch of fermentation kits right up front. You see a big wall full of different kinds of grain. Um, it's kind of displayed so people can see all the different kinds of grain you need to make beer or can use to make beer. Um, but for the most part, it's just a retail store. Do you have like, I see, and I've never been there. Do you have like cards people can pick up with like recipes? We, we want? have recipes there. We, we have boxed kits ready to go for people that are doing stovetop brewing. And those are kind of our house recipes. And we have about 36 of those, um, spanning a whole breadth of, different beer styles so you can just look at those and say oh that sounds really good can i do this one and you can either grab that box or if you do a different kind of brewing you can ask us to change the recipe or if it's a different size of brewing we can change the recipe to meet your needs basically okay that's cool and you were mentioning earlier i don't know if this is a good uh, spot to bring this up but you can make any beer gluten free yeah so a product came out um for the homebrew industry i think it came out way before that Cody, my business partner, knows the history a little bit better than I do, but it's from a company called White Labs. It's called Clarity Firm, and they used it. uh, Beer can have what's called chill haze in it. Um, It's where you look at your beer, and it's perfectly clear, and then you stick it in the fridge to cool it down, and it gets hazy. That's due to proteins uh, in suspension in the beer. A company came up with an enzyme to break down those proteins to kill chill haze in commercial beers and in homebrew beers. And it turns out that same protein, that same enzyme breaks down the the proteins that make up gluten or or what people are allergic to in gluten. So I think gluten is two different kinds of protein that are stuck together. And this breaks them apart and breaks them down. And so... The Clarity Firm product, you can add it in any beer that you make, and it takes away the gluten. So why do, I mean, why, why aren't the big commercial beers, and why are... They are. Um, they're more, doing it more and more. They're, are they? There's the glutenator, the glutenator I oh, think, yeah, here. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Did you, have you tried that I've one? I've tried it. Not your fave? What I, what I think they're missing, and, so, and some commercial beers, and I wish I could say which ones they were right now off the top of my head, but... Before they were kind of making this is our gluten beer, you know, our gluten free beer, yeah. right? And it's a separate recipe, and it's you know this is our gluten free beer. But now I think more and more they're taking their flagship beer and then having an option to have it gluten free or just putting it in there and making it gluten free right off the bat. Interesting, because there's also like a Red Bridge or Red Stone. I don't know. It's mm. a gluten free beer. You can find it like at just Smiths or something. I'm pretty sure it's a big commercial. There's that one, and then the Glutenator. I want to say there's another gluten-free beer, and I, I've just never been impressed. Well, there's Bard's, Bard's Tale as well. I have a friend that's a celiac, okay. so he was always looking for them. And, and like Sapporo, he could drink Sapporo too because it's just rice beer, basically. There's very Interesting. little gluten in it. but It didn't um, affect him. Right. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, we were just talking <laughs> I about I have a fun fact if you guys want to oh, show sure. it. What do you got? Uh, ladies or gentlemen, like if you want to do some homebrewing beer and you have a little extra... That stuff makes a great hair rinse beer. Oh. The protein in it is super, super good for your hair after you wash it. You're going to smell bad. Do you just like, have, have <laughs> you just like washed your hair I've in totally beer done this. or something? No. Well, so you wash your hair in the shower and everything, and then you kind of, you know, air, not just squeeze out the extra excess after you shower, excess water. And then you dump a beer on your head and you just let it air dry. 
And it's like one of the best hair treatments because the protein that you were talking about, which made me think of it Mm -hmm. in the beer, is like one of the best proteins for your hair. You better not drive after that. They're going to think you know what I mean. Or no, you should. So then you can pass those. Especially with with the new laws here. Would would, would that amount, like in the air, if it just dried on on your hair? Would the air have like a percentage, an alcohol percentage? Well, I think it's I think the blood, your breath yeah. or something oh, like that. Oh, is that, that. what it is? Uh, anyway, we actually need, need to uh, take a quick break, play a message from our sponsor. And then when we come back, you're actually doing an event in May. And, yes. and I want to talk about that. And obviously uh, a lot more of what you're doing at Salt City Brewing. But hang tight and we'll be right back. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Jed's Barbershop. With three locations now, you have no reason to not always look your best. Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barbershop is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. They have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House at 2153 East, 2100 South. They just opened up a third location at 167 East, 900 South, right next to Randy's Records. No appointment is necessary? Head on over to jedsbarbershop.com for more information. There's an event that you're doing May 7th at the Bohemian Brewery, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. What is it? What are you going to be doing? Is it an open to the public? Talk yes. about this. What, so, what do we got? It's called Lager Palooza. Um, there are homebrew competitions that happen all over the country all the time. Um, that are sponsored or held by the American Homebrewers Association. Um, sorry, that was my phone. And so we signed up to do that a couple of years ago. This is our third year doing Lager Palooza. The big homebrew competition in town, I'll plug it, is the the, is it the, the Beer Nuts, okay. uh, Beehive Brew Off. Sorry, I couldn't think of it for a second. Um, and they get lots and lots of entries from all over the country, mostly local. But um, we decided to do a similar event, but only loggers. So w- while the Beehive Brew Off, they do all kinds of beers. We're just taking entries for loggers and um, having the, the Bohemian help host it because they – they specialize in loggers, so and they're right by us down in Midvale. So we have a really great relationship with them, and it made sense to do a logger only competition with them. So that's what we're doing. Well, I mean, they're a great restaurant too. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I love the Bohemian. Mm-hmm. So, like somebody like myself, I could brew a nice logger and then submit it. Is Absolutely. that kind of when's the cutoff time for that, or is it cut so off? registrations open right now? If you're home brewer and you have something, you can register your beer now and let us know what it is and what you're going to enter um and then when you have to turn in your bottles to us um, that's the last week of april and then we're judging on may 7th um what are the who do the judges consist of so there's actually registered judges through the bjcp or the beer judge certification program oh wow um it's super nerdy that is super nerdy Uh, yeah (laughs) um (laughs) that's awesome but BJCP judges can judge, um, you know, homebrew competitions and professional competitions. And, um, we're registered with AHA. So when there's a competition and they need judges, I'm a registered judge. So I'll get an email saying, you know, hey, do you want to go to Denver and judge some beers? So it's, so it's a it's, pretty big deal. It, it is That's actually awesome. a pretty big deal. Um, and it, it's fun. And there's, there's several, um, have you ever been somewhere and they say, is there a registered judge <laughs> yes. in the audience? Yes. We need a registered judge. Is there a judge? doctor in the house? Wait, not, no. Not yet, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Day. Like, we need a registered <laughs> judge over here. That's awesome. Uh, That's like being a registered minister. Yeah. It's just one of those cool yeah. things that you have and other people don't. Absolutely. My <laughs> wife constantly makes fun of me for it. Oh, <laughs> she's just jealous. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, anyway, back to May 7th. So May 7th... Um, you know, it's it's a homebrew competition. We have judges um, locally that show up and do it, and um, I'll I will be judging. The other owner usually hosts it, and, and so he's doing other things where while the judging is going on. Um, 
So, so could like say Chrissy and I, we decide to show up. Do we? Could we sample? these beers or how does that work this year we're doing it a little bit different and the winner from last year um is the the bohemian is going to brew his beer and sell it during that day on may 7th seriously during an event in in their parking lot so you can go to the parking lot um event and have any bohemian beer you want sure um but they'll they'll have the the winner from last year's canned so you can taste the homebrew beer from last year brewed professionally that's why it's a called the pro-am competition and hang out and there'll be music and different things it's like a teeny teeny little beer festival in their parking lot is it free cost money free to just hang out but you have to pay for the food and you have to pay for any beer you get sure Um, it's just like they're opening the restaurant basically to the parking lot instead of just inside and then you can sample one of the old homebrew homebrewed beers from last year the winner did you mention the time um so that the actual um the food music and beer is going to be from 12 to 5 and then the brewers awards is at five o'clock and you could stick around for that and to see all the home brewers winning their awards for their homebrewed beer if you wanted to but the public's probably more interested in just hanging out and eating food and listening to music. Well, of stuff. course, of yeah. course. And I think, I think I saw something on Facebook for this event. If I'm not mistaken, I'll put the links for that at I am salt lake.com with this episode. So people can go to this episode and click on the links and, and find out more about this event. Anything else with the, anything else with this event that you want to plug or, um, not in particular. I mean, it's, Extra cool if you're a home brewer already, but it's it's a good chance for you know the just the general public to go to the Bohemian, which is an awesome restaurant anyway, and to try their beers if you haven't, and to try you know a, a winning home brewed recipe from the year before. So, what is kind of to steer a different direction now? What do you think the biggest misconception? with home brewing like what do you think the biggest misconception is it's a really good question um especially i think with wine people see home brewing as you know prison wine or or bathtub wine <laughs> or something that's like a low quality you say that like it's a bad thing i, mean, <laughs> okay, I'm I think not, that's not, definitely not, always the first thought i'm yeah. not judging anybody <laughs> um but the reality is that you can make really, really high-end wine and beer, of course, but um, I'll stick with wine for a second. Um, we have recipe kits in our store that's basically just varietal grape juice that's in a box that's been um, balanced for the acidity and the tannin levels and everything, and you're just fermenting it and aging it, basically. But you can get first pressing juice from a specific vineyard in California or wherever in the world, and it's as good a juice as any winery uses in the whole world. So you have access to that juice and you can make a what is would be a thirty or forty dollar bottle of wine and you can make it for eight or nine bucks. So it's really not in the distilling not distilling, the there's too many words. Um, <laughs> Home brewing. The, the brewing yeah. that makes the wine really good quality. It's actually before you get to that point, it's the actual quality of the juice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So grape juice, you know, when the plants that are used, how how much rain fell that year and how much wow. how old the vines are and all kinds of things go into what grape juice you get out of those grapes when they're picked, how cold it was that year. So you don't want to go to the store and grab some like Welch's Right. Yeah. Well, okay, I mean, cool. you can. Good to know. Good and to know. That's Concord grape juice and it yeah. you can make a good table wine. Table wine's like a lower percent, like seven to nine okay. percent. And I've had that, and I've had some really good Concord wines before. Um, But the key is kind of aging. The more Mm -hmm. alcohol you have in a product, whether it's beer or wine, the longer you want to let it age and kind of mellow out and become a little more palatable. And so when people make a, you know, 16, 17, 18% wine just to get drunk off of, and they drink it in two weeks after it's done fermenting, it's really, really harsh. It's like yeah. it's like grape juice and vodka, uh, bad vodka. <laughs> right. And so that's what people associate with. That's what with. alcoholics do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> gotcha. There's cheaper ways to get drunk than that. Right. So, um, you know, it's that's what people associate with homebrewed mm-hmm. wine a lot of times is, they, oh, I had it once and it was this really harsh, you know, acetone flavored grape juice. And you, that's not what you you 
you have things available to you to make really high end wines. That's actually oh man, I would love to try to make some high end so, wine. Like I mean, how much money are we talking? Like say say we decide hey we, let let's let's home brew some wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it is it really expensive to get into? No, for for a hobby, you know, you can wade into wine making for under two hundred bucks. Okay, I would that's, say. that's kind of what I was curious. And then you have like, what are we looking at? Twenty really, bucks, yeah. two hundred bucks. Yeah, so about uh -huh. two hundred bucks. And then that's all the supplies, and then moving forward, it's even less. Every time you do a batch, it's between 75 bucks and 175 bucks, depending on the, the quality of wine juice you're buying. Um, but how much wine are we talking? Gallons? Six gallons. Six, Six gallons. Six gallons is one 30 batch. bottles of wine. So that's a couple days for you, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> one day? What are you talking about? I'm a pro. No. Uh, I think I was reading, um, if you make under 100 gallons a year home brewing, then it's technically home brewing. If you yes. make over 100 gallons, it it crosses the line. I believe the, the law is written that it's 100 gallons per person per year up okay. to 200 gallons per household. Oh, okay. We got – you got three kids. I know. Myself, I was just thinking that. Does it work so... like taxes where you can count like heads in the room and then, you know. I mean, what are we working with here? We can make 500 <laughs> gallons here. What are you talking about? She's only eight, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I would say that – there it would be impossible to get in trouble for that and unless you somebody wanted to get you in trouble for that and they saw right. more than 200 gallons sitting there well, at a the time. And I think if you were labeling yeah, it, yeah. you had a sign up in your yard, wine for yeah. sale. You started like a like a little lemonade stand but <laughs> yeah, for adults. With wine. Yeah, yeah I mean I think then it would it would stick out. Have have you ever I have so many random questions, I apologize, sure. but I have heard people talk about making dandelion wine. And how great it is. Have you ever made that? or I haven't personally made it, but it? I've had some good dandelion wines. Mm -hmm. And one of our employees does it every year, I think. Oh, um, really? Does a little batch of dandelion wine. Uh, the key is just to make sure they haven't been sprayed with pesticides before you pick the dandelions. Oh, that's a good <laughs> you, idea. You go over to your neighbor, I'm picking dandelions, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> Make some, some wine over here. Yeah. But uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts like? And again, I, 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 the reason I know this, we live in Utah, but the, the local craft beer scene here in Utah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, the big names like Squatters and, and, uh, and, and Uinta and, and all that. But is it, it seems so incredible here. Mm -hmm. Why is the beer scene here so incredible? Any idea? Or is that kind of a tough question to put on to you? I mean, it's a big question, but I think there's a big counterculture in Utah that's yeah. passionate about everything counterculture, right? So... Mm -hmm. Um, people that like beer really like beer and people that like wine really like wine. And I think, I think the counterculture here drives that. There's also an aspect of Utah breweries having to brew a majority of their beer to 4% or three, two as uh, you know, by weight, it's really 4% by volume, which is the way the rest of the world measures their beer. They have to brew to 4% to have it on tap at a bar or, or to sell it in the grocery store here. So they have to make really good beer. You can't hide behind the alcohol content like a lot of brewers outside of the state do. So they're they're really on their game. It's hard to make a full-bodied, really you know, flavorful 4% beer. Um, and Utah brewers do it really well. And Utah brewers win a disproportional amount of awards because of it, I think. Sure. What it, What is the... Like, let's say somebody like myself, right? Well, I want to get into homebrew and I want to start making beer. And maybe one day I would like one of these big names. Again, back to Squatters or or uh, Wasatch. I guess they own. Anyway, I wanted to, you know, hey, I want I want this to get into their hands. I mean, is that kind of stuff ever possible? Could you actually become a successful home brewer, or do you have to do all the competitions? I guess and. Does that, I don't know if that question makes like, sense. No. Like, kind like of say, sell uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Company. Say I make like a really cool beer and I'm like, gosh, I want to sell this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of stuff possible? Absolutely. You then become a brewer. So uh, we, we have had customers go pro. Um, Brian down at two row that opened a couple of years ago, he was a customer of ours and opened up a brewery. He's a very solid brewer. He's makes awesome beers uh, he's really doing cool things he's also down in midvale with us um, what, what is it what is the name of that two row brewing two row brewing i haven't I mean, heard of it yeah. until now yeah i mean he's he's fairly small and he's newer so a lot of people haven't heard about him um but uh if you if you're familiar with the beer blog uh mikey's yeah. utah, utah beer blog yeah. he's having a competition right now um 
where people vote for the the best beers in Utah. And I think he has, well, I'm not sure. I haven't looked lately, but more than one in the final eight. And he's a relatively new brewer. So nice. that's pretty amazing. Um, there's also Talisman Brewing up in Ogden. They were a customer of ours that went pro. We had a distiller move back south who we helped learn uh, teach him how to distill and he went pro and went back south so so there's been plenty of people that uh, either, have either have ambitions to go pro or have actually gone pro um, and we've had employees move on to brewery positions as well and now they're they're um, sellermen or, or or brewers do you find yourself being a mentor to a lot of these people do they come back and ask for advice or tips or want you to try what they're making and get opinions yeah, absolutely. That I mean, funny. that's part of part of the business is they'll mm-hmm. bring in beer. If it, what's funny is that you'll get somebody brand new and they'll bring in a beer, all all you know, mousy and you know, nervous, and like try this beer, and we'll try it, and they're like, yeah, it's awesome. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, I thought it was, but they didn't. <laughs> but they, they don't want to come in and be like, yeah, they didn't. This is the best. They didn't think tried. it was until they had confirmation that it yeah, was. You know, yeah. and then and then there's the opposite of that where p- some people make you know, terrible beer and they have daddy's eyes for it and they, they think it's the best thing ever, right. but it's not that good. Right on. We actually have Jared here. He's one of our Patreon supporters. Hold on. Let me turn your microphone up there. How are you, my friend? Good. <laughs> You've been kind of sitting in and, and watching oh, yeah. this. Do you, do you have any questions uh, for Ross here yeah, or yeah. anything you want to bring to the table? Well, I was wondering, um, I'm an organizer of a, a meetup group and it's called uh, Salt, Salt City Beerology. And so I was wondering if you guys offer like some type of classes or something like that. Yeah. You know, where these, my followers can learn, you know, cause I'm trying to get this going, you know, like build the culture up. So, yeah. Um, we do beginner brew classes several times a year. Um, we, we kind of do it when we feel like we need to do it. We're trying to get a more, um, you know, year long schedule put together so people n- can plan for it rather than us just saying, Hey, in two weeks we're having a, a brew class. Um, and that's, we're going to come out with that pretty soon for the whole year. And we do all grain brewing too, which is something we could, we could talk about, but there's different kinds of brewing that you can get into. And so we, we do a class for beginners and then kind of a demo for the, the more advanced. And then we have a, we have a wine swap club basically where people can come and trade their home brewed wine and and taste some wine and do those things. So yeah, there's there's groups you can get on on. Any other any other questions? Or no, I was just to... I was kind of wondering about that. You know, that's a big thing because I think that a lot of people want to learn more. Some that are novice and some that you know are sure. expert and they want to keep learning. So it's right nice on. to yeah. just learn from the masters. Sure, you sure. Know? You mentioned all all grain brewing. What what yeah. is that? What you... so most people start out with what's called grain extract brewing. Sure, where you get a lot of your fermentables or or what's eaten by the yeast from um, malt extract or maltose. Um, those are really easy to do uh, as a stovetop brewer. You don't need a whole bunch of extra equipment. You can just do it on your stovetop, and it's not that big of a deal. And you can make really good beer with them. So. Um, I, I don't like to say that it's, it's, you know, less of a beer, but it's just easier to do. It's a little faster to do. And then there's all grain brewing, which is what breweries do. And they don't have extract made for them. They pull all the sugar out of the grain themselves. So instead of, you know, four or five pounds of malt extract and a couple of pounds of grain, you're using 10 or 12 pounds of grain to make your beer. Um, that might not make sense as you're just listening to it, but, uh, it's a little more intensive of a process. Yeah. It's a little bit longer of a process. It's really not that much harder, but it's, it takes a little bit more time. Do you think people can kind of control flavors differently by doing it that way? Yes. So okay. all grain brewers, just like the breweries have more control over their beer when they do it that way. And they have access to more base malts um the base malt is what kind of is the backbone of the beer okay and you have more variety to choose from when you're doing all grain okay and again that seems sort of ethereal when i'm just talking about it but well makes sense i mean you're really starting with just more raw raw ingredients and kind of tweaking it to your liking as you go as opposed to buying like something that's almost pre-made right and building on it kind of I, i hate using this 
analogy, but like Betty Crocker, you know, in cake mix, you know, a lot of that's done for you. Yeah. Um, it's same just, basic and, ingredients. Yeah. Same ingredients. There's nothing saying you couldn't put together what's in that box. Um, but, and it makes great cake. Don't, don't let me say it. Doesn't. Oh yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we've had extract brewers win awards that are, are up against the all grain brewers. So you can actually absolutely make really good beer with extract grain recipes. But if you want a little bit more control and if you want to do it from quote unquote scratch, mm -hmm. then all grain brewing is kind of where you get into if you get really geeky into the hobby. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like more of a passion thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. So for some reason, I, I imagine you're always just at home brewing beer. Like, well, or <laughs> not that you're always at home brewing beer, but like you, you, you don't buy beer very often. You probably drink a lot. It, but let's say hypothetically you were to stop by like a Seven Eleven and you were to grab some beer. Do you have like a favorite beer that you like? What is your go-to beer? So that's a hard one because I I think beer is very much about um, how you're feeling and and what you're eating and what you're doing. You know, I I generally knock you know Bud Light and Miller Light and Coors Light and all of those. But they have a place too. But though, they have you? a place. If I'm mowing the lawn and it's 105 degrees outside, I don't want a Guinness. You know, I don't want a big thick stout. I want something super light, and I'm fine with that. And if if somebody offered me a, a Bud Light and that's all that was in the room, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no. Um, right. Because I like beer. No, I, you know, I was just wondering if you had like a favorite. You know, I mean, I don't, all... I don't know that there's a, a favorite. I, I, I used to be a big fat tire guy. It's more like you know, candy that, bars, that right? was kind of my like thing. You, fat tire, you're in the mood, mood for, for Snickers, hops or rising. Or in the mood for a yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, cutthroat is up there for me. If yeah. I go to a bar or I'm out, and and usually it's on tap, but lot of different places in utah and i think it's a really solid beer for a four percent beer there's tons of flavor in it it's good hop character in it. maybe one day we'll have some beer on tap here That'd in be our so cool. <laughs> i cut you off what did you say you used to love well no the hops rising fat tire those were my yeah. beers yeah. like i would just go crazy about if i saw them fat tire especially i got really excited when fat tire came to utah when uh you couldn't get it in utah and then they brought it Anyway, long story there, but so you uh, can you can clone recipes too. So say you really like fat tire, that's a pretty well known recipe, and you can make it as a home brewer. So theoretically, let me just blow your mind here. You could you could <laughs> you could brew fat tire as a home brewer. You could add the clarity firm; it'd be gluten free, and then you could keg it legally in Utah and have it on tap. Dude. What? Get this out is of like town. this is quickly becoming a very interesting thing to yeah. me. <laughs> like, yeah, a lot of people don't know all three of those things, and yeah, and it it kind of blows people's minds. But absolutely, wouldn't that you be can a have... fun date night? <laughs> it sounds like more than just a date <laughs> night. It'd be like a date month. Yeah. You know? Well, let's. Uh, we gotta. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, let's. I, I like to find out a couple other things. You know about people we bring on here, just uh, as we kind of wind it down a little bit uh other hobbies and interests that you have besides brewing beers and wines and yeah all that stuff what else do you like to do with your time um i mean i'm i'm married with a couple of kids so i don't i don't have the the funds to go out and do everything i'd love to do but i i really like the outdoors my parents came out to the west to be outdoors and so i was raised outdoors and i um i really like to go camping and go on trails um you know, be out in the middle of nowhere away from as many people as I can get, you know, away from. Um, the other owner, Cody McKendrick, also same thing. He he loves to go out and go out in the middle of nowhere and do long dirt road trails. And that's something we both have in common. Unfortunately, we don't get to go with each other very often because we're watching the store. You know, we can't. It's hard for both turns. of us to go away. Oh. But Do you have employees? Yeah, we do. Can... We have, I think... 10 total people including me and cody uh working there um and and the other store yeah yeah so we have coverage um but it, it can be, get hard with yeah. both of us plus gone. you guys are probably the experts and it's nice to have our, our guys are really good we we have really good i mean we can be away we don't have to worry about not people not getting their questions answered everybody yeah. that works there is very knowledgeable if you could go back to your first day of high school and give yourself a little piece of advice what would you tell yourself? 
oh, well, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I would probably, I, I mean, if I knew in high school that I could honestly go to the grocery store, like I said earlier, and get apple juice and bread yeast <laughs> yes. and make hard cider, I would be making that all, all the time. I'd be have <laughs> gallons and gallons of it. And it's hustling it at the high school, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's amazing. It's a great side business. You have to learn to be an entrepreneur at some point. Right. Um, yeah. No, I, mean, I, I love I love just honest, honest feet, yeah. you know, responses like that, you know, instead of some profound uh, thing where you're like, oh, a bunch of crap. You're kidding, you know, yeah, like, no. you know, just honesty, man. That's, you know, I love it. Yeah. I, it's it's insanely easy to ferment a, a beverage. Um, and if I if I had that knowledge and I don't know why I didn't, it's so easy. But, <laughs> you know, I guess when Plus you're in you're high learning. school, you just want to get the cheapest thing possible and get it right now. And you don't want to wait for things. But <laughs> most memorable concert or sporting event. Do you have any that stick out in your head that you're like, wow, that was cool? You know, not not really. really. I'm not uh, not a big sports guy I'm or, not a huge or sports concert guy. person. Um, and I don't I don't go to a ton of concerts. I'm sorry. Fair enough. If you could learn one random skill, what would it be? I don't know. I have I have a piano that just sits in my house that I kind of wish I knew how to play. I love is that, it. Is that weird? No. I, no. I mean, I think we all have that thing that like stares at us in the yeah, corner of the like room you and you're like, thinking, no, I will that. not learn how to crochet. <laughs> you know, all these knitting needles staring back at me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. You know, I, <laughs> Things you learn. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Salt Lake City. I'm always curious, like, say, people listening, we always get a lot of listeners that have never been to Salt Lake, right? Or mm -hmm. they're moving here, they've never been here, they want to check it out. What would Ross tell them to check out? What would you say? You got to check out this building, this area of town. You got to do this. I mean, from the standpoint of what we're talking about here, I would, I would tell them to try, try out all the breweries. You know, I think people have this idea that one, you can't get drunk in Salt Lake, which is not true, obviously. And that the, the 4% law makes beers less quality, but it's actually the exact opposite of that, in my opinion. So I would tell them to, you know, try not to think about the percent of alcohol that's in your beer and actually go out and go to a brewery and taste the beer and just, you know, judge it on its merit rather than its alcohol content. And then as far as, you know, the city, there's there's lots of things to see in the city, certainly, but it goes back to what I like to do, you know, go to the mountains, go to southern Utah, go out to the West yeah. Desert, you know. And, and that's what I want to hear, you know, your recommendations yeah. to, to things to do. You yeah, know? I mean, Salt Lake City is a great town. Um, I've, I've been to lots of other cities, and I always, you know, find myself wanting to be here. Um, but a big part of that is because you can, it's, you can be up in the mountains in an hour and be away from people and you can be down in some of the most amazing red rock scenery in the world in a few hours. You know, it's pretty cool. Any favorite local eating spots, any places, uh, that you like to go when you go out to eat lunch, dinner, breakfast? Yeah, I'm, I live down in Midvale, so I don't have quite the cool, eclectic stuff that's down in Salt Lake. But well, Midvale, Salt Lake, I mean, yeah. close enough. I mean. Yeah, um, I really like the Bohemian. Okay. Honestly, that's right by my house. They make um, a great brunch. Were you yeah. disappointed when Hooters shut down there? I, you know, I'd never <laughs> been to Hooters in my entire life. So no, but it is right by my house, and I never went. You never went to Hooters. No. It was horrible. Um, horrible food. Uh, the porcupine I really like. They have some great stuff. Great nachos. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure you've had the nachos. And their chicken soup is amazing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had that. Their creamy chicken soup. you got to mm -mm. try that. Um, but then downtown, um, you know, I really like, uh, oh, there's just there's so, so there's much. A lot. No, and I yeah. just, you know, I always like to ask people. Whiskey Street yeah. is, is a great place to go. It's a cool bar. Um, uh, the beer bar is great pretty neat they have some cool stuff and like i said the uh the the beer hive and Great the bayou beers, yeah. if you're looking for a selection of beers that's those are the places to go doesn't the bayou aren't don't they have the most beers on tap or i know it's one of the top places yeah they, at least at some point they did um they have the most beer on tap and the most beer available um so and the beer hive is a close second i think sure sure is there anything you would change about utah or salt lake city I know that's such a big question too. I mean, all the pressure's on you right now. You're changing it. I mean, 
that the new DUI laws. Is <laughs> Isn't that so horrible? Silly. Like what? Silly. Yeah. It's obviously just to generate money. Sure. Not that I advocate people getting drunk and driving, obviously, but that's not what the issue is. So. Well, and I, I think it's you know we don't need to get heavy deep into that, but I think it's so interesting. You know, I posted things online and in people's responses, well, just don't drink and drive, and it's like it's not that. That's not what you're promoting. It's it's much deeper. Yeah. No, it's it's ruining responsible drinking, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's making everybody a non-responsible drinker. You can go and have a beer with lunch and not be at any risk of hurting anybody on the street. Sure. Um, and now you can't. Yeah. So, Or maybe you can't. I probably can. Bigger people like myself probably can. But, you know, my wife can't. She can't have a drink and go out. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Let's uh, so we got the event going on May seventh again at the at the Bohemian Brewery, and I'll put the links up that at I am Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. Anything more you want to mention that before we we let um, you go? Yeah, I mean if you're interested in the wine swap, uh, it's Salt City Wine Swap. You can go to that link and you put maybe put that link up. SaltCityWineSwap dot com. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that um, really does sound super cool. And it's it's a club, so you pay to be in it. It's the annual fee of like 25 bucks but you get some free things with it and and you can go to a wine swap without paying and just learn something and and see what we're doing without having to pay anything so i recommend if anybody wants to get into wine to go to one of those we do those quarterly um the the dates are up on that website and then um if you are a home brewer and you like the social medias you can do hashtag what you brewing on any of the pictures you take of your homebrew and you can win a free batch of beer from us. So. Right on. Yeah. So like on Instagram. Instagram, Twitter, Twitter Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, anything that takes a, a hashtag slash pound sign. <laughs> right on. Depending on your age. Yeah. Or... Right. I, I totally forgot to ask. Do you guys uh, selling? Well, I'm sure you would. I don't know what the difference between mead and wine would be. But can you homebrew mead also? Yeah, absolutely. So mead is just honey wine. Okay. So instead of getting your sugars from grapes, you're getting it from honey. Um, basically, if there's a sugar from a plant or natural source, it's been fermented and there's a name for it. Um, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, you can make any kind of fruit into wine. Uh, we have wine fruit bases. It doesn't have to just be grapes. It can be strawberries or cherries or rhubarb or whatever. If it has sugar in it, you can you can make it into wine. Um, and then there's honey wine, hard, hard cider. You can add malt sugar to your wines or your meads or, and make combinations and all kinds of different things. Man, that just sounds like fun. Yeah. I think we're going to have oh. some new hobbies, I especially after that are. baby's born. Right? Come on, baby. We've got to wait till the baby's <laughs> born before. Uh, and then the Salt City Brew Supply on Facebook. Yep. Ogden. Is it Ogden Brew Supply or what is it? Ogden City o- Brew Ogden Supply. Ogden City Brew Supply. Mm-hmm. And then I'll put the websites. Is it just saltcitybrewsupply.com? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then and then Ogden City Brewing. Or brew supply. Dot com, yep. Any other things you want to plug or mention, tell people to connect with you at? Uh, nope, I think that's it. Awesome. Well, I've had a heck of a chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jared. I know you've been quiet over there, but... Uh, thank you. Thank th- you very much. You bet. And then, Chrissy, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. It's Absolute, been fun. Absolutely. We'll end it there. All right. Many thanks again to Ross Metzger from Salt City and Ogden City Brew Supply for coming on this podcast. Head on over to IamSaltLake.com slash 272 for all the links and all the information to get in touch with him. Let him know you heard him on this podcast. Go in there and get yourself some homebrew supply products, a kit, and say, hey, oh, by the way, I heard you guys on I Am Salt Lake podcast. Yeah. Let him know. I mean, connect with him. For sure. And as soon as this baby's born, Chrissy, I am going to go in there and I'm going to get us a wine making Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Well, I could still make it. Well, you could still make it, but too uh, tempting. I think uh, I think maybe wait until the baby's maybe, born and kind of get past idea. that. Yeah. I always wanted to make it, but I always lived in small apartments, and now that we're in a house, right now we have the space. Now we have a space. I want to do some uh, hard apple cider. Oh my gosh, some hard yes. pear cider. That's such a good idea. Some some uh, wine and, and and we could even try the gluten free thing now that we know that's an option. Yeah, I mean, gluten-free he makes beer. it sound like gosh, why isn't all these big corporate commercial beer companies? 
yeah, making gluten free options. Just make everything gluten free. But uh, so it's kind of an interesting. If you're a home brewer, get in touch with us. We'd love to find out what you have going on mm-hmm. uh, with this. So, so the other night we got to hang out with Eric from Mediocre Show. Yeah, I think it's your second time meeting him. Yeah, it's always a blast. It really is. It's it's a lot of fun when he comes through Salt Lake City uh, to head down to Moab. And he's like the nicest guy who remembers everybody, and he's he's so personable that I'm I'm always like, uh, like I'm intimidated. Ah, you can't be intimidated. <laughs> and he Eric. looks directly at you when he's talking to you, and it's just like he's very confident. <laughs> Well, we can learn he's, a lot. He's from awesome, him, but uh, no, so it was great to uh, grab a burger and hang out at Lucky Thirteen with Eric. That was really fun. Uh, if you're not a, f- I mean, go go listen to Mediocre Show, one of my favorite podcasts. It is, it's a lot of fun to listen to. Hey, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Jed's Barber Shop. With three locations now, you have no reason to not always look your best. Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barber Shop is, is open seven days a week. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Their brand new third location just barely opened up. It's right at 167 East, 900 South. It's right next door to Randy's Records. They also have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House, 2153 East, 2100 South. Listen, no appointments necessary. Just show up, get a haircut, uh, get a beard trim. If you have a last minute uh, job interview or date, or if you're coming to our wedding, yeah, you want to look good. And you don't even have to make an appointment. Just stop on your way over. Just stop and get a haircut and uh, let them know you heard them on uh, I Am Salt Lake podcast. Hey, they were recently voted best in state by uh, City Weekly and KSL. So with that alone, you know you're in good hands. Jedsbarbershop.com is where you can find out more uh, information about that. I want to talk about, so this, this last week I was excited because I found out that I got accepted to uh, be part of the podcast movement uh, conference in Anaheim Yeah, this upcoming summer. They didn't, uh, you know, so basically you applied to kind of with the speech idea, right? Like, yeah. Or like kind of a talk. Yeah. It's kind of like TEDx style, but for podcasting. Yeah. Well, I was actually going to do one of the, the actual uh, classes. That's oh, what I, that's what I applied yeah, yeah. to do for, for uh, local podcasting. Okay. And right that's, that's what I applied to do. And uh, so I got the email that they thought of a different idea for me. They want me to help lead a roundtable discussion mm-hmm. on local podcasting. Not sure exactly the details on this and everything, uh, what it entails, but I'm excited that they thought I was cool enough to do this. Oh, yeah. Well, and they probably noticed, I mean, it's going to be a lot like what you did. We went last year. And in between uh, sessions, you always had a group of people around you asking you questions and trying to learn how to do a local podcast. Because all of a sudden, I feel like local podcasting has exploded. Yeah, people are interested in it. When I started I Am Salt Lake five years ago, Mm -hmm. there was nothing out there. Yeah. There was like one or two podcasts and a lot of people are like, oh, that's that's kind of a weird idea. So you're like the godfather of local <laughs> podcasting, especially, you know, at the movement, people are like, oh my gosh, teach me everything. Yeah. So. And I mean, I feel like I've learned a few things in the last five years that yeah. I feel like I can uh, uh, teach people. So if you're, if you're going to podcast movement, reach out, let me know. I'd love to connect with you. And if you're not going to podcast movement, please consider going. It's a good time. It really is. Uh, we got some new iTunes reviews, though, that I wanted to read here, because uh, iTunes reviews are very important for the podcast. Yes. They help the podcast growth. Uh, they kind of help us ranking in iTunes, and it helps put Salt Lake City on the map. Yeah, it helps everyone find us and learn about Salt Lake City. I am com slash iTunes is going to send you over there. Uh, we got we got two here. I want to read really quickly. Uh, it's from Trusty Colonia. I, I, I'm going to butcher these names. I, I probably shouldn't even <laughs> read them. Uh, they say, "Great show. Keep up the good work." And then there's another one here from Mans. Uh, I'm not going to even pronounce that one. They they just have a bunch of letters. Uh, they say, "Great podcast." But this one's kind of cool because they say, "I started listening because they are in the building my in laws own, and I was very surprised how good it is." I have now listened to all of the episodes. I look I look forward to a new one every week. Such great people. That's so cool. Isn't that rad? Yeah. I mean it really I mean and I actually remember meeting this guy uh I was I was leaving or coming from the building or something. I remember like you that. telling me. Yeah, and yeah. he was with he was with the maintenance guy here at the building where we record. Uh-huh. He's like, "Oh yeah, I listen to your podcast." So Which was, is always a surprise still to to me when people are like, "Oh, I listen to that." It's like, "Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> That's awesome." 
So, go, so head on in there. Le- leave a review on iTunes. You guys seriously do not understand how important they are. It takes you just a minute. Yeah. And Please. like, thank you so much to people who have. We, we love hearing uh, your feedback for that. Let's wrap this episode up, Chrissy. It's Let's been a it. great week. I love these conversations that we have with people here in Salt Lake, getting yeah. to know their story. Uh, head on over to our website, IamSaltLake.com. That's where you can, uh, all the contact information right there. Uh, again, many thanks to Ross Metzger for coming on this episode. Head on into uh, Salt City Brew Supply or Ogden City Brew Supply. Thank you, Olio. Thank you, Jeds. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you guys for listening. You have a great week. And good night, Grammy.